All right, the first thing I want to say before you write anything down is this, is you're going to want to have at least, probably at least two or three spaces between each one of these lines, okay? Uh, we're going to have some notes under here, some notes under here, some notes under here, and some notes under here, but because I'm limited in the space, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to erase this in a little bit and I'm going to put some, put some notes in there. I'm going to expand it out. Okay. All right. So what we're going to talk about here is average costs and revenues. Okay. What is an average for a firm? Well, whenever a firm talks about an average financial measure, what it's talking about is uh, an average for a firm is where a cost or a revenue is divided over each unit of output, and that means quantity. So basically, all you're doing for an average is dividing a number by quantity, by whatever quantity was produced and sold. It is the per unit cost or revenue. So whenever we say, well, how much such and so per unit is that? What they really mean is average, per unit and average mean the exact same thing. So when we calculate an average, we can interpret it as a per unit measure. And we are going to identify four of them. Average revenue, average variable cost, average fixed cost, and average total cost. Now you may be thinking, but Professor Ryan, you said we only had three more variables to look at. That's four variables. Well, we're going to get to the answer to that interesting curiosity in just a moment. All right, so let's go over each one of these. So we've got average revenue. Average revenue basically means the total revenue per unit of quantity. Now, here's the interesting thing about that is that we already have a variable that tells us the total revenue per unit of quantity. Let me show you. In order to calculate average revenue, we would want to know our total revenue, total revenue per unit of quantity, which means divided by quantity. Well, don't we already have a variable that gives us total revenue divided by quantity? It's price, right? That's the price. And so that's why even though we have four variables here, we only have three additional new variables because average revenue is one of the ones that we've already been dealing with. We've already been dealing with price. It's one of our original seven variables, okay? But I wanted to frame it in a different way so that you understand that another way of referring to price is as the average revenue or the total revenue divided by quantity. So we can say that price is the per unit revenue of a firm. All right, now let's talk about average costs. We have average variable cost, which we call AVC, average fixed cost, AFC, and average total cost, ATC. And just so that we are consistent here, let's go ahead and put a P up here for average revenue, which is price, okay? All right, so the average variable cost uh, is basically just the variable cost per unit of quantity. And we're gonna do the exact same thing here that we did up here for total revenue. We're gonna do variable cost, well, let's write it out as AVC, okay? so. A, V, C, the way we calculate it very simply is we take the variable cost and divide it by quantity. And then what we have to do is we typically have to round the answer to two decimal places because when you divide variable cost by quantity, you usually wind up with a decimal that goes on and on and on forever, okay? Well, not forever because it's a, it's a, it's a ratio, so it wouldn't go on forever, but it goes past the pennies, okay? So for example, let's say that the variable cost, let's do an example here in a different color. Let's say that variable cost for the firm is 23,000. And let's say that in incurring those variable costs, the company produces, produced 596 units. Well, basically what we would do is we would divide variable cost by quantity. So divide 23,000 by 596. So 23,000 divided by 596, and we get 38.59060403. Now, all we need are the pennies. So we're gonna to round to the nearest penny, which would give us $38.59. So average variable cost, would be $38.59.
38, 59. Just got to squeeze it in there, running out of room, okay? And that is how we calculate average variable cost. Now, it's this exact same thing for average fixed cost and average total cost. So average fixed cost, AFC, is equal to fixed cost divided by quantity, and average total cost is equal to total cost divided by quantity, and we would have to do the exact same thing. We would just simply take whatever the, total, whatever the fixed cost is, divide it by quantity, and then round to the nearest penny. Same thing for average total cost. We take the total cost, divide by quantity, and then, um, and, and then round to the nearest penny. So here's what I'd like to do right now is let's go over to our table and for the first five rows, let's go ahead and fill in, let's go ahead and calculate average variable cost, average fixed cost, and average total cost. Then we'll come back and I'll show you a couple interesting uh, qu qualities about these three things. All right, so we've got our first five rows here and over here on the right, our last three variables, average variable cost, average fixed cost, and average total cost. And what we said is to calculate average variable cost, we just need to take our variable cost, 1350, so I'm gonna key that in a calculator, and divide that by the quantity, which is 40. So divided by 40, and that gives us 3375. And so uh, then let's try the average fixed cost here. So for average fixed cost, we're gonna take the fixed cost of 500 and divide that by the quantity of 40. And that's gonna give us $12.50, so 12.50. And then for average total cost, um, we're gonna take the total cost, 18.50, and divide that by the quantity of 40. And that'll give us 46.25. 46 and 25. And now let's go ahead to the row where quantity is 41. So for average variable cost, we're going to take our average variable or we're going to take our variable cost of 1400 and divide by 41. So 1400 divided by 41, that gives us Now now we're going to have to round. On these first 3 we didn't have to round. Now we have to round. We've got 34.1463. So that 6 after the 1 4 uh, is going to tell us to move the four, the pennies, from four up to five. So we're going to have 34.15. Now this could create a problem for us uh, if we want to go back to variable cost because we round it, and so then that could give us an inaccuracy. Uh, but this is our final answer right now, so we're going to go ahead and round. Now for average fixed cost, we're going to do 500 divided by 41. So 500 divided by 41, that's fixed cost divided by quantity, and that gives us, uh, again, we have to round, it, it says 12.195, 12 so 12.195 would round up to $12.20, so we're going to put $12.20, and then for average total cost, we're going to do total cost, which is 1900 divided by 41, the quantity, and again, we're going to have to round here. This time, we're not going to round up. We're going to round down. Uh, this says 46.341. So 46, that'll be $46.34. Okay. And so what I think you should do now is you should fill in the next three rows on your own. And then, uh, so maybe pause this video and fill in these um, last three rows for all three variables. And now I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to sort of speed all this up, and you can check your answers. All right, and now you can check your answers. Maybe pause it, check your answers, and see if you got uh, the same thing as me. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the first five rows of our table, but I'm only showing quantity and then the average costs. I just want to point out a couple more things that you need to understand uh, about the average costs that you should put in your notes. When you take these average costs, so let's say um, we know that average variable cost is equal to variable cost divided by quantity.
Well, here's the interesting thing. If you know average variable cost and you know the quantity, then you can actually go back to variable cost because algebraically, if we multiply by quantity on both sides, it'll cancel here and we find that variable cost is equal to average variable cost times quantity. And it would be the exact same thing for fixed cost and for total cost. That fixed cost is equal to average fixed cost times quantity. And more importantly, this is the most important one, total cost is equal to average total cost times quantity. So if you know the quantity and you know the average total cost, you can actually get back to the, uh, you can actually get back to total cost, okay? If you know the average total cost and the quantity. So that's the first thing I wanted to tell you in general. The second thing I want to show you in general, going back to, since our formula, our average variable cost is equal to uh, variable cost, excuse me, variable cost divided by quantity, I want to show you one more thing. One of the things, sort of tricky questions that I will give you in this lesson is I will give you information to find quantity. I will tell you what the average variable cost is, and I will tell you what the variable cost is, but you're going to say, hey, I can't answer this question if I don't know the quantity. Well, if you know average variable cost and you know the variable cost, you can find the quantity, okay? Um, so let's say, and then I'll show you how to do it algebraically here, okay? I'm going to get down here. If I'm trying to solve for quantity and I know variable cost and average variable cost, what I can do here is multiply by quantity on both sides. That'll cancel quantity. That gives me quantity times AVC is equal to variable cost. Now, if I divide by average variable cost on both sides, I get quantity is equal to variable cost divided by average variable cost. And what that does is that gives us three formulas for solving for quantity, depending on whether we're using variable cost, fixed cost, or total cost. That one way of finding quantity is to do variable cost divided by average variable cost. You can also use fixed cost divided by average fixed cost, and you can also use total cost divided by average total cost. So if you are in the middle of solving a problem in which you need to know the quantity that was produced by the firm, and you don't have quantity, but you do know total cost and average total cost, you can just simply divide total cost divided by average total cost. That will give you the quantity that was produced by the firm. So you're going to want to tuck that away, write these formulas down. If you've got a list, if you've got a sheet of paper that has a whole bunch of formulas on it, you may want to go ahead and put these on there as well. Now, the last couple things that I want to say are this. As quantity increases, we're speaking strictly now about fixed costs. This is just fixed costs. As quantity increases, okay, so I have up arrow with a Q. That means increase in quantity. We know that fixed costs don't change, right? So fixed costs are stable. And since average fixed cost is equal to fixed cost divided by quantity, okay, I don't know how much you know about math, but as the denominator increases in a fraction, the value of the quotient decreases. And so the basic idea with average fixed costs is as quantity increases, average fixed cost decreases. And that's what you can see here. Look at average fixed costs. It's getting smaller, 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 smaller. And what a lot of businesses want to do is as they increase their quantity, they would like for their average fixed costs to get closer and closer and closer to zero. That way they can make most of their decisions based only on variable costs, and that's a very common thing. So tuck that away in your head if you plan on being a financial business person someday, okay? The last thing that I want to say about average costs is this. You may have already noticed this, uh, but I saved it just for now, is that average total cost, another way of calculating average total cost, 
average total cost is actually equal to the sum of average variable costs and average fixed costs. Okay, so if we take 3375 and add 1250 to it, we get 4625. Now you may be thinking, but Professor Ryan, when I go down here, it's true that this plus this is equal to this, and this plus this is equal to this, and this, but, but this plus this does not equal this, and this plus this does not equal this. Well, the reason that that happens is because of rounding errors. And that is why it's so important for you to calculate these values, not always simply by summing. So doing average variable cost plus average fixed cost for average total cost, that is not always the best way to do it. If, if it's the only way you can get average total cost, fine. But if you have the quantity and if you have the total cost, it's always better to do total cost divided by quantity and then round. So be very careful. But generally speaking, we can find average total cost by adding average variable cost plus average fixed cost. Now I'm gonna show you mathematically why that works. We know that average total cost is equal to total cost divided by quantity. We also know that total cost is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. So now that's over quantity. We can now split this up into two fractions because we have a common denominator and a sum in the numerator. So what we now have is fixed costs over quantity plus variable cost over quantity. And if you haven't noticed, fixed cost over quantity, that's average fixed cost plus, and variable cost divided by quantity is average variable cost. And that's just a very quick proof that average total cost is equal to average fixed cost plus average variable cost, or the other way around, or average variable cost plus average fixed cost, because addition is commutative. It doesn't matter which one you add first, okay? All right, that's all we have for average costs and revenues. And now we only have one lesson left. We're going to bring all these 12 variables together.